How are we doing, folks? Your host, Moose, here on the Pitt Panthers Football Network as we welcome you to Heinz Field as your Pitt Panthers host the Louisville Cardinals in a primetime ACC matchup. It's a cross-division showdown. The Panthers with their first ACC matchup of the year, sitting at 3-0, number 17 in the country, hosting Louisville, number 16 in the country, who are 3-1 on the year but 1-0 in conference already. Of course, their lone loss coming to Notre Dame, but they are led by high-flying quarterback Lamar Jackson. So we'll see if his brand of offense can succeed here at Heinz Field, or will the Panthers' defense finally be the one to shut down number eight in his Heisman hopes. Tune in to find out here on the Pitt Panthers Football Network. So we welcome you to Heinz Field as the Panthers will receive to get this game underway. Maurice French is back to take the opening kickoff. He's out to about the 20-25, gets a little bit of running room, and is tackled at about the 28-yard line in this matchup between the Panthers and the Cardinals. They're statistically Louisville unbelievable offense 497 yards including 302 yards per game through the air they haven't done great scoring wise that's for sure uh, but it's definitely going to be a matchup that will feature two you know different juxtapositions of offenses the Panthers led by a high-powered running attack with Darren Hall picking up two yards on his opening carry of the game it's a two-pronged attack for the Panthers they've got Darren Hall and Quadri Olison, two very strong backs Olison's going to take the handoff this time he's shut down at about the line a scrimmage is going to set up third and seven for the Panthers. So that's going to leave Kenny Pickett now in the shotgun. Three wide receiver set. Back looking to pass. He finds Maurice French underneath on the little tunnel screen. But French is only able to pick up two yards. He's shut down. And the Panthers will be forced to punt the ball away. Allowing Lamar Jackson to take over for the Cardinals. He's a Heisman contender. He's one of the most exciting and dominant players in college football. Finished, I think, third in Heisman voting last year. He's looking to put another solid Heisman campaign forward, and that's a great start to it here on the Heinz Field turf. He finds Devontae Pete over the middle for a 19-yard catch and run, and they're already in to Panthers territory very early here. Draw handoff now. Malik Staples gets through for about eight yards before being wrapped up. I think that was Elijah Zeiss on the tackle, and it ends up being a first down carry. And this is a big game for the Panthers. They have a number of high-profile prospects in attendance, including David Butler, number four-ranked outside linebacker, Lamar Davis, number two-ranked center, and Drew Hall in the number three-ranked strong safety. All guys visiting for the Panthers. In total, they have eight different prospects in attendance for this match, and they want to put on a good show for him. But Malik Staples weasels his way through into the secondary. Sean Idowu drags him down from behind, but he picks up 15, and that is a first down into the red zone for the Cardinals already. Jackson, the shotgun, he's going to hold on to the ball on the read option there. He gets forward. It's a good tackle. Paris Ford comes up from his safety position to help make the tackle and bring Jackson down, setting up second and six. Jackson back to pass in the shotgun here. Finds his man over the middle. That is Smith. Jalen Smith breaks off a tackle. Dane Jackson couldn't bring him down. And just like that, Louisville marches down the field, takes a 7-0 lead. Jackson, Jackson stood tall in the pocket, hangs in there, makes a pass, and Louisville does have the lead. Maurice French, though, cuts outside. Good, solid return for the Panthers. Shades of Quadri Henderson as French picks up 40, giving the Panthers very good field position to open this drive. And that's Paul Leese, the freshman, getting outside on the Jets. We've only picks up a yard. He just doesn't have necessarily that breakaway acceleration that the Panthers need to see in order to put the jet sweeps to use like they did with Quadri Henderson, who, of course, we know has gone on uh, to the NFL at this point in time in his career. Aaron Matthews underneath gets a first down. Nice 10-yard slant as Pickett finds him over the middle. Second and nine now for the Panthers. It's another little mid-screen for Maurice French. He does a good job shaking his way outside, picks up eight, and it's third and short now for the Panthers. They bring in a heavy set two tight ends and a fullback as Jay Balmer goes in motion. It's going to be a handoff. That's Darren Hall finds a hole up the middle. Hall picks up seven, and that's first down yardage for the Panthers. First and ten now. Five wide set with Pickett in the shotgun. Three wide receivers to the tight side, and they're going to run it that way. It's Paul Lee on the jet sweep. He finds playing space, and he was nearly out and away to the end zone. 18-yard carry. He's just tripped up. That's a touchdown saving tackle as the Panthers are brought down, but they're in the red zone now, and it's Pickett handing off to Olison. He cuts to the outside, doesn't get a ton of yards there, about four, 
but it's going to set up now third and seven for the Panthers. So Pickett's got bunch formation to his left tight with Olsen as the lone setback. He's going to drop back. He rolls out to his left, looking, looking, looking. Throws it just over, throws his man. That was Trey Tipton who was open in the flats. Pickett can't find him. And the Panthers will have to settle for a short J-bump field goal. 30 yards for the sophomore kicker up and in. And the Panthers are on the board, trailing now 7-3. to three. So Lamar Jackson made easy work down uh, getting through the Panthers' sideline. It was Malik Staples who did really, really well. He's brought down nicely. That was a combination of Paris Ford and Sean Idowu on the tackle there. But the combination of Malik Staples running and Lamar Jackson passing was stellar on that opening drive. Louisville's going to look to replicate that. But so far, they're unable to do so. That was Keyshawn Camp and uh, excuse me, Sean Wolfgang into the backfield for a loss, setting up now third and 12 for the Cardinal. Jackson with plenty of time to pass. Beats the zone there and finds Jalen Smith for 20 yards and an easy first down grab. He makes it look so easy finding the hole in that zone and exploiting it. Now it's a little fake jet sweep. Elijah Zeiss busts around the outside though and brings down Staples for no gain. Third and long now for the Cardinals with Jackson in the shotgun. Four wide receivers set. He's back to pass. Artist Scott comes off the edge. Corner blitz. Kaiser Artist Scott, the sophomore corner. Brings down Jackson. He gets the ball away for an incompletion, but the Panthers will take over. Olison now first and 10. Great bit of running here. He finds his first bit of space. 10-yard carry for the senior running back, and it's a first down for the Panthers. Four wide set for Pickett now, who's in the shotgun. Drops back, looks to pass plenty of time. Finds Arujo Lopes over the middle. That's Rafael Arujo Lopes getting first down yardage for the Panthers and moving them to about midfield. Pickett under center now. He's got Aaron Matthews in motion to his right-hand side. He drops back plenty of time, rolls out to his right, looking, looking, dumps it off eventually to Quadri Olison, and that's essentially an incomplete pass for the Panthers. Ball goes nowhere. Third and ten now, five wide set for Pickett. Uh, late moments of the first quarter, he finds Paul Lease underneath, who does just enough to pick up the first down on the little slant. Twelve yards. And the Panthers should have about one play remaining here in the opening quarter. Pickett's going to hand it off. It's Olison. Does a nice job shifting through the line. Picks up five. And we will go to the second quarter with your Pitt Panthers trailing 7-3 to three to the Louisville Cardinals on the Pitt Panthers Football Network. So we open up the second quarter now. Panthers facing a second and five at the Louisville 32. Pickett, read option. He's going to hold on to the ball this time. Finds plenty of running room and slides down. Picks up an easy first down for the Panthers, just like clockwork. And they are nearing the Louisville red zone here. First and 10 from the 22. It's a handoff to Darren Hall, and he has absolutely nowhere to go. Bottled up in the backfield, loses two. It's going to be second and 12 now for the Panthers. High formation for Pickett. He's going to roll out to his right-hand side. Nice little sprint out. Finds George Aston underneath. Great job, Aston. He bowls over three players and gets down to the six-yard line. That is the fullback, the redshirt senior, George Aston. He's a Swiss Army knife for the Panthers here. He can catch it. He can run it. He can block, setting them up with great field position first and goal. And it's Darren Hall fighting his way, pirouettes and spins on top of some would-be tacklers. He's into the end zone, and the Panthers take the lead. Here at Heinz Field, 10-7. And can Lamar Jackson answer for the Cardinal is now the question. The Panthers with a very impressive drive of their own. Jackson's going to look to uh, provide a counter. Finds Bagley outside for about four, setting up second and six. Jackson's back to pass. The Panthers bring a corner blitz. He exploits it, finds Bagley again. He's brought down by Paris Ford, but not after picking up 12 and a first down for the Cardinal. Bring in some motion here. The, the Cardinal like to introduce something similar to what the Panthers do. They do use some motion in their offense, maybe some jet sweeps we might be able to see. This time it's a toss to the outside to Malik Staples. Nobody home for the Panthers after the motion. 12-yard run and a first down for Louisville into Panther territory. Jackson now play action as he drops back, looks to pass. Deep ball, the play action, full Dane Jackson and Travion Samuel gets behind him. A beautiful throw on the money from Jackson. 46 yards, and Louisville retakes the lead 14-10. to So a big play from Lamar Jackson. The run-pass option is something that he'll have in his arsenal all day, I would think, and that's a great play for Louisville to take the lead. The Panthers open up their drive here. Maurice French with a six-yard carry. It's going to set up a 
big third and two for the Panthers if they want to stay in this game. Bunch formation tight to Kenny Pickett's right-hand side of his formation. He's going to roll out to the right-hand side there. Nice throw underneath, finds Trey Tipton, picks up nine, and that's a first down for the Panthers. These rollouts and kind of quarterback sprint outs really take advantage of Pickett's mobility and ability to throw on the run, so expect to see more of that from the Panthers. Not a great play there. Olison's bottled up in the backfield on the screen, loses four, and it's going to be third and 13, so the Panthers will come out in a five-wide set. Pick it back to pass. Pressure brought. He finds a great throw over the top. That's Paul Lease, the freshman, having a big impact today. That's a catch and run of 36 yards. Pick it now. 10 of 12 passing for 99 yards on the day. So very efficient performance for Kenny Pickett right now. Olison's not able to go anywhere, and that could be important that Pickett can have a big day if the Panthers' run game continues to struggle like it has. I think Louisville's making a concerted effort to shut down the running game and make Pickett beat him with his arm, beat them with his arm, which he is doing very well at this point in time. Finds Maurice French underneath for a gain of seven. It's going to set up a third and four now for the Panthers. So pick it under center. Two tight ends to his left. It's a little play action. He's going to roll out. Does a nice job finding Aston underneath. But the Panthers are not going to pick up the first down. Jay Bump's going to have to come out again and boot the field goal through. The Panthers cut the Louisville advantage to a single point at 14 to 13. And these two offenses have been very good, especially the Louisville offense led by Lamar Jackson. You can see seven of nine passing already, 116 yards and a couple of touchdowns in just about a quarter and a half of plays. Really exploited a Panthers secondary that's been, for the most part, very solid this year. The Panthers secondary has looked much improved in their opening three games of the season. Penn State didn't do much on them. UC, uh, UCF had a very average day by their standards, but Lamar Jackson is just tearing them up. Nice little screen there. Bubble screen finds Javante Bagley for 17 yards, and they're into Panther territory yet again as we get down to the waning moments of the second quarter. Jackson's going to get outside. His first real run that we've seen him take on all day. Picks up six, and it's just enough for the first down before being brought down. Jackson in the shotgun now. Plenty of time back to passing. He's just making it look so easy. The simple out route gets a seven-yard gain. It's Pete again, his fourth catch already. Second three now. Five wide set for Jackson again. The Panthers bring some pressure, but he finds his underneath route. Pete is leveled by Paris Ford, but he does enough to get the first down yet again. Both quarterbacks very efficient moving the football and taking good care of it right now. Jackson's going to hand the ball off. This time it's Malik Stables. He's got a huge hole forward. Fights off some tacklers. Celine Brightwell finally drags him down from behind, but not before he gets to the one-yard line. So can the Panthers shut down this Louisville attack? It's Jackson. Read option into the end zone. It's what he does so well. Keeps it himself. Takes that touchdown. That's for the Heisman stats for sure for Lamar. One-yard carry. And Louisville bumps their lead back up to eight points now. 21-13. But the Panthers will have one final chance to try and level the scoring here. Darren Hall up the middle for seven with about a minute and a half to play in the opening half. The Panthers will hurry back to the line trying to get that first down to stop the clock as best they can. It's Hall again. Does just enough. Fights forward for the first down. And the Panthers will try and get back to the line. Move the ball. 45 seconds to play though. Second and 11. Now Pickett's in the shotgun. Panthers nearing midfield looking for a score. Pickett Plenty of time over the middle. That's Arujo Lopes. Dances outside of a man. Collides with Aaron Matthews, or it could have gone for even more. But that's a 22-yard catch and run for Arujo Lopes, and the Panthers are in scoring distance. Play action. Pick it. Back to pass. Takes a sack. You can tell he tried to throw it away, but he just didn't have enough time. Didn't want to take intentional grounding, and the Panthers will have to take a timeout with 19 seconds to play in the opening half here. Five wide set for Pickett on second and very long. Looks underneath. He's got Paul Lees. Plenty of room, but Lees coughs up the football. It's recovered by Louisville. Paul Lees had plenty of yardage ahead of him. He takes a big hit, though, and coughs up the football. Carter knocks it loose. Louisville recovers, and just like that, we're going to go to the half with the Panthers trailing. 21-13, and that could be a huge momentum swing. So how the Panthers respond in the second half will be very, very key. Because if we take a look at the halftime stats, Pitt was moving the ball fantastically. Kenny Pickett, probably his best game of his career so far. 140 yards through the air. The Panthers, only 75 on the ground. You can see offensively, the teams are actually very similar. It's just the Panthers have that one turnover. If they had finished that drive off, I think things would be very, very different as we head to the second half. We'd be you know, potentially tied in score. So how the Panthers respond to that adversity will really 
show what this team's made of. So we welcome you back to Heinz Field for the second half as your Pitt Panthers play host to the Louisville Cardinals. The Panthers trailing 21-13. Louisville opens the half with the ball, and they look to increase their advantage and make things increasingly dire for the Panthers if they can take a two-score lead here. Second and 10 now. Jackson under center. Back to pass. Plenty of time. He's got his tight end. That's Mickey Crum out to the outside. Kaiser out of Scott pushes him out, but not after a catch and run of 30 yards. And Louisville driving into Panthers territory already. Five wide set for Jackson. He's back to pass. Does just enough to get the ball out. Finds Charles Stanberry for four yards. Second and six now. For the Cardinals. So Jackson looking to convert here. He's got staples to his left. He's back to pass. Chucks it. He finds Mickey Crum underneath again. Just, just enough. And that seems to be the symbolism of the game here. That Louisville gets just enough to get those first down conversions. Jackson knows right where the first down marker is all the time. Great tackle from Hendricks there. Bringing down staples. But Louisville looking to set up another conversion. Now third and five here. Jackson under center. Tight end to his right, brings a receiver in motion. Back to pass, plenty of time. Gets the pass out. It's just enough. He's got Pete, Devontae, Pete. Miss, those Paris Ford swung and missed on a tackle there. Pete turned it into a 16-yard catch and run. First and 10 now for Louisville at the 13. Jackson's back to pass, plenty of time. He finds Smith across the middle. Jalen Smith with his second touchdown catch of the game. Jackson now three touchdowns to only three incompletions. I mean, he just put that through the eye of a needle. A great throw, and that shows why this is a guy that's going to be playing on Sundays next year, you would imagine. So Louisville takes a two-score advantage, and the Panthers have a long hill to climb up, and it's even longer now with Olison losing four yards there, setting up a third and 14 for Kenny Pickett and the Panthers. So Pickett in these beautiful throwback uniforms as the Panthers here looking to channel the days of old. That's Pickett looking like... Dan Marino right there as he chucks it out wide. Trey Tipton pulls it in, and it's a huge first down conversion for the Panthers. First and 10 now, it's Darren Hall. His first big run of the day picks up 14 as he jukes and weaves through the left side of the line there and picks up the first down for the Panthers. Olison's in now behind Pickett, takes a handoff, and he's got plenty of room to weave forward, picks up a nice first down, and this Panthers rushing attack looks like they're finding a little bit of magic finally. Second and 12 now with Pickett under center here. Play action pass. He looks, rolls out to his right as he's done a few times today. Plenty of time. Decides to hang on to it. Loses the football. Jay Balmer, thankfully, is on hand. Turns into a five-yard loss for the Panthers, but it could have been much, much worse. Ball security from Pickett nearly turns it away. Third and long, though. Pickett. Plenty of time to pass. He's going very deep. Double coverage. Aaron Matthews couldn't haul it in, and the Panthers... Forced to punt it away, and Louisville could really break this game open right now. But it's a great punt. Pins Louisville back at their own seven. Malik Staples gives them plenty of room to work with now. The six-yard gain setting up third and four. If the Panthers can get a stop here, this could be huge to swing the momentum for them. Hand off. It's Staples. He's wrapped up. That was Philippi Motley breaking into the backfield. Brings Staples down, and the Panthers will take over in Louisville territory. And Quadri Olsen with a big handoff up the middle rumbles for eight yards. The Panthers nearing the Louisville 35-yard line already. Second and two. Big formation for the Panthers. Offset eye. Olison runs over a man and picks up four, and that's a Panthers first down. So Olison's hit 40 yards on the day. Definitely not his best game of the season by any stretch, but still enough to keep the ball moving for the Panthers. Darren Hall fights off a tackler there. He gets outside. Solid 13-yard run. Looked like it might go for nothing, but great job from Darren Hall. You can see Celine Brightwell will be out the rest of this game with a potential concussion as such you'll see a lot of Barry Jenkins the sophomore linebacker at middle linebacker and Kenny Pickett brought down for a sack there big loss looked like he had a receiver over the middle but things just collapsed for him he's gonna have to do a lot finds Paul Lease here to chunk 
away. That 17 yards turns into a third and one now, very manageable. And he's going to have Darren Hall as his lone setback. Pickett's going to hand it off to Hall in third and one. Hall finds the hole, gets down to about the five-yard line, and it's a first and goal now for the Panthers. Three wide set to Pickett's right-hand side. Olsen has his side guard. He's back to pass a little tunnel screen, it looks like. Aaron Matthews catches it, but nowhere to go. He's brought down from behind, and it'll set up second and goal now for the Panthers. Pickett's got lease. He's going to try and shovel it to him. It's deflected away. Lucky to be just incomplete there as Pickett can't find anyone. And it's going to be third and goal now. Shotgun formation for the Panthers. Pickett's going to hand off. It's Darren Hall. Can he find his way to the end zone? No, he's brought down at the one. Huge goal line stand by Louisville. But the Panthers are going for it. Final play of the quarter potentially here. And the Panthers are going to look to try and punch it in. Aston goes in motion. It's a handoff. It's Olison. He's into the back of the end zone. Touchdown, Panthers. Quadri Olison rumbles in, and the Panthers will cut the Louisville advantage to 28-20 to close out the third quarter here and set up a photo finish as the fourth quarter comes forward. Can Lamar Jackson lead Louisville to a victory here at Hinesfield, or will Kenny Pickett lead the Panthers to a come-from-behind victory and maintain their unbeaten season. Well, Jackson's going to have the first attempt to try and give Louisville an insurmountable advantage here. He's got plenty of time back to pass, finds Bagley out to the outside, and he has just done an unbelievable job, has Lamar Jackson, getting the football out. The Panthers have brought pressure. You can see guys getting through the line. There's Wolfgang pressuring him again, but he gets just enough time and is able to find his receivers for first down yardage, it seems like, every single throw. Panthers look like they're bringing the house now. They got a bunch of up linemen here. Artis Scott hits Jackson, but he gets the ball out again, and it's an eight-yard gain. It's not a huge gain, but when it could be a loss, it could be a sack. That's the play that's going to make the difference for the Cardinal. Motion for Mickey Crum out of the tight end position. As Jackson hands off to Staples. He takes kind of a counter there, and he's got a ton of room going forward. Sean Idowu drags him down, but not after a 21-yard gain, and Louisville's into Panthers territory yet again. Jackson back to pass. Plenty of time. Finds a receiver. That's Devontae Pete, who gets away from his man. I think that was Dennis Briggs on the coverage. Pete 23-yard gain and Louisville knocking on the doorstep. Jackson back to pass. Finds his man. That's Clark. He dances and walks into the end zone. Cameron Clark, the fullback. It's the fourth touchdown for Jackson of this game. And Louisville takes a two-score advantage yet again. The Panthers need to answer, and they need to answer in a timely fashion so they can give themselves a chance to catch up. Pickett does a nice job on the read option, picking up nine. But it's third and one now for the Panthers. Tight set to the right. Olison's going to take the handoff and just bust it up the middle just enough to get first down yards for the Panthers and keep the chains moving. Second and 10 now. Pickett's in the shotgun. Three wide to his left. He's back. Time to pass. Looks. Aaron Matthews hauls it in. Nice little down route to Aaron Matthews on the comeback, and the Panthers pick up the first down. So Pickett has managed the job fantastically well for the Panthers. There's no doubt about that. The running game has come alive, but the defense just has not been there for the Panthers. A defense that shut down a high-flying Penn State offense that beyond the pit game, has been averaging like 50 points a game. The Panthers completely shut down Trace McSorley. They shut down Saquon Barkley. Um, they did a great job limiting what the UCF offense could do, holding them to 20 points, a team that's been putting up a ton of points. But Louisville and Lamar Jackson have just been destroying the Panthers, and that's not going to help their cause. Darren Hall smothered in the backfield, loss of four on the screen. It's going to be third and 11 now. For the Panthers, five wide set for Pickett. He needs the first down conversion. Looks over the middle. It's Trey Tipton, and this is four down territory, so that's a good chunk. So the Panthers set up fourth and four after the seven-yard gain. Five wide set for Pickett again. This could be the ball game here if the Panthers can't convert. Pickett looks. He finds Arujo Lopes who throws it. Unbelievable throw from Pickett to find Arujo Lopes in that mass of humanity. Hauls it in. Great sure hands from the receiver. And the Panthers move the sticks. Darren Hall now. Great bit of blocking out to the right-hand side. He picks up eight. And the Panthers are in the red zone knocking on the door again. But they need to score fairly quickly and get a stop to give themselves a chance. Hall runs it forward. That's three yards in the first down, which will at least hold the clock momentarily. But it tick, tick, tick. Second and ten now for the Panthers. Pickett's going to hand off. It's Darren Hall. Nowhere to go as he sheds one tackler, but brought down after just a single yard. Third and nine now for the Panthers. 
Pickett's got that bunch formation tight to his left. Under center, he's going to sprint out, looking, looking, looking. Settles, throws it straight, tipped in. He gets out of bounds after 12, but a great pitch and catch from Kenny Pickett, who's had a huge game for the Panthers, and it's first and goal now from the two-yard line. So a quick score would be huge now. Pickett's going to hand off. It's Darren Hall, weaves his way into the end zone. Pitt cuts the lead back to a single touchdown after the Darren Hall score, 35-27. They're within one possession again, but they're going to need a stop from their defense that has not looked likely to stop Louisville much, if at all, today. Jackson back to pass, fights away from pressure, hits Mickey Crum on the outside, and that's a 7-yard grab that's going to help Louisville run some clock as they're starting to run things down here. Second three now, five wide set for Lamar Jackson, running the clock all the way down to the very bare minimum, and he gets the first down. That's Jalen Smith, 11 yards over the middle, and the Panthers are going to have to consider using some timeouts here very very soon Jackson now back throws out wide he's found Devontae Pete yet again he steps out of bounds that's a huge benefit for the Panthers but they are nearing field goal range which would be devastation for Pitt if Louisville can get there and Malik Staples is gonna do just that he busts out of a tackle I think that might have been Elijah Zeiss that missed it and they are in field goal range with a minute and a half to play Staples up the middle goes nowhere brought down by Barry Jordan in the middle and Pat Narduzzi uses his first timeout but the Panthers are going to have to hope for a miracle here. Jackson to Staples again. Wolfgang does a nice job to bring him down after two. Third and six, another timeout for the Panthers. Minute 25 to play. Goal line formation essentially for Louisville. Staples goes nowhere. That's Amir Watts brings him down after a yard. And the Panthers will use their final timeout. And this is what the ball game hinges on. The field goal attempt for Louisville. It's only about... Uh, what's that 27 yards it's up it's good Louisville with a two possession lead what can the Panthers do pick it five wide set he's gonna have to lead them down the field as quickly as possible Aaron Matthews can't haul the ball in there pick it 23 of 31 208 yards a solid performance you have to say he's managed the game well they haven't really had the big play other than that one pass to the lease so they're gonna need to find a big play soon and that's not it nearly intercepted Lamarquez Thomas deflects the ball away third and ten now for the Panthers they haven't even moved it yet on this opening drive but they will find Paul Lease under the middle good catch by the freshman receiver for 15 to move the ball and the Panthers at least stay with a prayer in this contest first and ten pick it now Rolls out to his right, looks, he's found a Rujo Lopes, who's going to have the first down and get out of bounds after a 12-yard gain. The Panthers nearing midfield with just over a minute to play. Pick it, back, looks out wide, that could be nearly intercepted, deflected away, but the Panthers will live to fight another day. Pick it, he's taking some chances, you have to give the sophomore credit, there's nothing else he could really do at this point in time. He's got underneath, that's Paul Lees. But the clock is going to tick. The Panthers can't stop it. They're going to have to hustle to the line here on third and three. Pickett's back to pass again. Looks, gets the first down. That's Maurice French. That'll at least stop the clock momentarily while they move the chains. So Pickett hurries the troops back to the line here in the five wide set. He's back. Rolls out to his right-hand side. Dumps it underneath. That's Arujo Lopes who picks up five and gets out of bounds with 36 seconds to play. Pickett now. In the shotgun, five wide set. We're going to say that for, I would assume, every play here the rest of the way. He's got him in. That was a red shirt freshman Benjamin Ogden. You can tell how little we say his name. He gets into the game due to fatiguing team. Damar Hamlin's even in the game right now for the Panthers. Nearly intercepted. That was Alfonso Carter nearly picking off Pickett, but it's going to be fourth and five now for the Panthers with 28 seconds to play. The ball game on the line again, and Pickett goes to the sure-handed receiver, Paul Lease underneath. He's had a big game, Lease has, with the exception of that fumble. He's played very, very well, and the Panthers keep the chains moving. Pickett going towards the end zone, nearly finds Aaron Matthews, but it's knocked away by Sturgill, and it's going to be second and 10 with 19 seconds to play. Matthews goes in motion. Pickett's back to pass. Looks for Matthews, and it's just knocked away. Matthews can't hang on. So it'll be third and ten now for the Panthers. Pickett in the shotgun yet again. 16 seconds left to play here. He looks. He finds Matthews on the screen. Gets down to about the one. If he'd have got in, that would have been huge. But he's brought down. The Panthers will have to hurry to the line. I think they're going to spike it. Pickett's going to down at the two. Aaron Matthews. Just if he could have extended the football, that could have been huge for the Panthers. But it's going to be second goal now from the one. 
10 seconds to play. The Panthers have to get into the end zone on this play. Pickett, it's a read option. He gives the hand off to Olison. He can't get in. The Panthers can't stop the clock. And time is going to run out on this comeback attempt. You have to wonder what the thought process was for the Panthers there. I think with how good their running attack has been this season, they trusted that they could get into the end zone with that play, with the read option. But Louisville snuffed it out, and the Panthers are going to face some questions about that play call. Pat Narduzzi, no doubt, will hear about that in his post-game presser. He'll hear about it at his weekly you know, press show. But the Panthers did the best they could. It was an impressive effort of fight, but Lamar Jackson just had a fantastic performance. The Panthers' defense had no answer for his quick passing, and they fall 38-27 at Heinz Field. We thank you so much for tuning in. As always... Hail to Pitt. We'll see you soon. We're signing off on the Pitt Panthers Football Network.